So, welcome. We are in drag season. So it's time to start building some drag cars. So. I know lots of guys are talking about drag racing and stuff and they all want to get into it and they all think it's too expensive. You don't need to get into this drag racing with the fastest car you could possibly ever find. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, watching racing, going to see what these guys have been doing. Nine times out of ten, most of these guys put a huge motor in and a huge battery and they cannot get the power to the ground and they cannot get it to go straight down the track. So, my personal opinion, I think that you should be starting off with a car that is two-wheel drive, short course chassis, platform, something you haven't been using for a while, uh, slashes work great. Uh, you could start off with a brushed one and upgrade to a brushless motor, it doesn't have to be brushless out of the box. Uh, slash is good. Uh, here I have a uh, 22S, Losi 22S SCT. Uh, this one has mostly seen parking lot days. Uh, if you can find something that's got a low center of gravity chassis, that's probably going to be your best bet because it's going to be able to, you're going to be able to get it weight down low, planted, and everything. Just got to get yourself a set of rubber now. Get yourself a decent drag body that you pick. There are tons of them out there. I am going to run a CUDA body on this one. I'll dig up that body. So, it's really not that expensive to get into these. Your average, in Canada, your average two wheel drive short course truck is under 300 bucks. You know, after you get your batteries and stuff. Um, that's if it's brushed. And then you can decide from there if you can put the power down to the ground. Most guys, and brushed isn't going to really cut it for racing, you're going to want to go brushless, but you don't have to go with the fastest brushless system. You don't have to go with the, um, what is it, the Drag King, Macklin Drag King, I can't remember what the heck it was called, D, DHK or DKH or whatever. Anyways, you don't need to go with that one. Uh, you don't need to go with the fancy tech and you don't need to go with the fancy spectrum. Uh, you don't know to create big huge hobby wing ESCs. You don't have to go with that stuff because the rules state 2S, 540 can most of the time, depending on whereabouts you are. I know here they don't want you going any bigger than a 540 can, brushless. And that's it. You have to be a short course chassis started two wheel drive short course chassis that's it we're going to take this truck apart here and we're going to turn this into a drag racer and we have started off with some pretty simple stuff oh, let's take a look at the goodie bag here that we got we got today i decided we're going to do the fatty ones so we're doing the big mamba mambos these are the big guys they're extra wide because I think on the back of the Cuda that's going to look awesome. Uh, I am going to run, well these are actually going to go on a different build. Uh, these are going to be the fronts, these are going with the tires I have right here. These are the Starfish. Uh, I am doing the Starfish beadlocks on the back. Okay, Starfish beadlocks. And here are the fronts that we're going to run on here. A uh, set of Hottie 2.2s. And that's really all we need for that. that so that is going to be our build. Okay, first thing we're doing, we're going to get rid of this body. It's not in bad shape, but. Who wants to race with that? Crash over there. So this truck here is set up with a uh, Dynamite ESC. I can't remember what the average is on this. There we go. 
your 60 amp fuse sport brush the CSC. So forward reverse, it is sensorless. Uh, it's a sensorless motor. This is a 3300KV brushless combo that's in here. Uh, another nice thing about this truck, it's got full CVs uh, inside there. So you can see everything's kind of a little rusty. It's been sitting for a while. Uh, so we clean all that stuff up as well. It's got a really nice platform. It sits low. Uh, the battery will sit low on it. I'm going to basically bring the entire chassis down as much as we can get it. Um, get it as close to the ground as possible. I am going to be more than likely swapping out a couple of shocks here and everything to try and get the stance down low. And uh, then we'll fit test the body onto here. And then we'll get that all revved up and ready to go. And we gotta get this all done very quickly because racing is, well, testing to this tomorrow. So let's get on it. Well, so uh, I don't know if you can see it very good, but MIP, those wheel nuts are on there so hard that it uh, actually cracked my bit. That's kind of a bit of a piss off, really. <laughs> but uh, we're going to uh, have to deal with that now. Okay. Okay, so we got wheels off. Uh, I got a couple screws here. I'm going to change out on the top just to shorten this down. I took the back bumper off. Huh, I can't believe I broke this. This is uh, I've torqued a lot of stuff on this, and these freaking little wheel nuts were on here so hard that I actually split the end on this wrench. So good thing I had another one because that would have made a really crappy day. Anyways. So uh, these tires will now get sacrificed to the tire gods and used for something else. I'm not sure what yet. I'm sure I'll think of something. And um, now I am going to, well first I'm going to change out these two screws on here. And then once I'm done changing out those two screws, I'm going to take this off. And I'm going to get to the fun part of mounting up these rear tires. Okay, here we go. So I got uh, some Mambo tires and we're putting them on a set of Starfish beadlock rims. Now, I know if you watch uh, any of our channel, you're probably going to see a video up. Aaron is showing you guys how to properly glue and says that, you know, some people are scared of gluing and don't want to glue and blah blah blah. I don't want to glue. So, sorry. <laughs> Fact is, um, for me, for drag tires, now I totally get it with other cars and other tires. For me, and drag tires, it seems that you burn through them pretty quick. And if we're going to be burning through tires, I don't want to be buying new rims every single time. And I will not deglue a rim ever. I hate degluing rims. It uh, just makes a mess and warps the rim. And I just, I despise everything about it. So I won't do it. So I am going to use these fancy bead locks. And plus, I think they look pretty badass. So yeah. Say what you will. I don't care. I just need this to be done for tonight. <laughs> so here we go. So these tires are not the Velton tires. These are Mambo. These are the big wide ones. Um, I'll just take show you real quickly. Inside there, if you look at the foam, it is a thicker rubber and it is kind of gridded, so it might have a little bit less ballooning tendency. Um, if you notice the way they've designed this, it's fairly flat on the outside, right? And then on the inside, it's actually got a lip. Um, standard reactions they have, they're pretty much flush on both sides. 
and they will have ballooning kind of thing on the inside and they're all good to go. So let's make some tires. Got one done. Uh, they go together quite nicely. I like them. I don't have a tire balancer here. Aaron has a tire balancer and I'm going to be stealing that from him later, but for today I'm just going to carry on with it like this. Now, uh, one of the things that you may notice on this is uh, in this chassis, or <laughs> in these wheels, when you bead lock them together, they have holes that line up here and here. Now when I put it together, I tried to make sure the holes were lined up. The reason I'm doing that is because just so it's a clean, clean, easy path for the air to escape. Um, it's quite firm. Um, they're really, really tacky ground. So these are going to be pretty cool. Right? And uh, get the other one done here now. And then we'll uh, see what they look like once we mount them up. I think they're going to look really good. So let's get the next one done. Now, one thing I've noticed on these is uh, they do have. On the plastic, when the molding was done, you can see it right about there. They have a little bit of a mold from when they cast these rims, and there's a little bit of a nipple sticking out there. So I just clean it up with my exacto knife. The reason for that is I want, when I have this clamped in, I want this beadlock ring to clamp down nice and solid and flat, as flat as I can possibly get it with my hands. That way you don't get a little weird wobble going on or anything like that. So, yeah, just cut that little bit of plastic. It's a regular exacto knife. There's not much there. It's pretty easy to do. I might have been able to do a sprue cutter. Uh, if you have a really good sprue cutter, you might be able to get it because they're flush. This one's pretty worn, so you have to use a good hobby grade one. There we go, two rims done. I think they look pretty cool. So uh, I do really like that. So now I get to do the fun part of gluing the front tires. Well, let's get started on these fronts. These are the Starfish slash Bandit. Blah. They're the ones that are supposed to match these guys. These are Starfish as well, so Starfish and Starfish. Going with these. And I'm also running green compound Hoosier front potties. They are basically the uh, front drag tire made by J Concepts. So I know most guys are trying to use uh, tire elastics or tire bands now. I have a set of tire bands, but they're for bigger tires. The other ones I have are not here, and I wanted to get this done. So it turns out that this wheel fits just inside my cup that I use for doing my shocks. So it squeezes in there nicely. So I just put the bead in, I lightly pushed it in there until it was compressing all the way around evenly and um, see how that goes. They're only front tires, so it's not the end of the world if it's not perfect. Um, back tires, you want to make sure they're glued well all the way around if you're gluing them because this is where the horsepower is. These are just going to keep it going straight up and down the road. They might peel off, but these aren't going to wear anywhere near as fast as those guys do.
well chassis is somewhat set up it's not quite right we're gonna have to get uh, narrower arms and stuff to fit this particular body or I might just find a different body it's pretty wide on the back end but it is set so it's not gonna hit right now uh, front end the front end I think we could make it work uh, it's one of the things that really bothers me about the whole drag racing scene is that every one of these stupid bodies has been designed to not fit a normal short course truck which is pain in the ass anyways uh, we're gonna go out there and give this thing a blast of paint and make this real quick this body is probably going to be the uh, test and tune body from now on Okay, well I'm back from painting. It was quick and nasty and wow, probably one of the worst jobs I've done in a long, long, long time, but we're on a mission. We're trying to get paint. We're trying to get out and get going here. So we are trying to find the holes. There they are. So there we go. We have a Cuda. Now this is probably only going to see a couple runs on this body for this trip. I'm probably going to put the short course body back on it until I figure out a few things to do with the wheel wells. I've got some ideas. I do not want to narrow the stance on this truck, on this car. So I'm going to figure out a few things to do and we'll get her up and going. Besides, this is just a matter of throwing a car together in a day and uh, getting going up. So, this is going to really look cool. Uh, this is the purple, anodized purple from Tamiya with PS Black, PS5 Black on the back. I've got stickers to put on, but that's for my daughter. That's her job to do. Alright, so, next thing you see on this thing is going to be on the track. <laughs> 